Welcome everybody back to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 2019 Elemental RP1. Now Elemental has been around since 2012 and has been building towards and making this car ever since. So uh, yeah, this is part of the Super Speed Car Pack DLC. That's been this car pack that has four cars added to it, this being one of them. And uh, yeah, it's a really, really good track oriented vehicle, although it is road legal at the same time. It's got a central carbon and alum uh, tub that weighs just 143 pounds. So it's extremely light, but also extremely strong at the same time. It's got a front and rear diffuser, which contribute to 440 pounds of downforce at 100 miles an hour and 882 pounds at 150 miles an hour. So that's again, really, really impressive. And uh, yeah, if we get inside, you'll see that uh, the uh, pedals and the like, hopefully you can see, uh, but basically you sit in a kind of position like a uh, F1 car where your, uh, your feet are up more in the air than they are on the ground. So uh, that's where the front diffuser can come into play. But yeah, you've got a decent amount of uh, practicality in here because obviously you've got a passenger seat and uh, yeah, but you've also got, surprisingly, luggage space. Now you wouldn't think it by looking at this car that it's got luggage space at all, but if you see these two little uh, triangles on the side of each of, uh, of the engine, they are 100 litres of luggage space each, which is apparently more than our Audi R8, which is, uh, yeah, really rather quite impressive. But this has a quite an impressive engine as well. Um, it's one we've seen many times in various different cars because it is a 2 litre inline 4 turbocharged EcoBoost Ford engine which produces 280 horsepower and 350 pounds feet of torque. Now that's not quite as much as say we've had in the likes of a Ford Focus RS but because this only weighs 1,394 pounds that is yeah n more than enough power for this kind of car. Now granted there are newer versions of this car that have upwards of 350 or 370 horsepower and thereabouts so yeah you can get even more power in this car and you can add a uh, spoiler onto the rear of this car in this game as well to improve aerodynamics but yeah this 280 horsepower version is more than enough for a car that weighs as little as this especially for a car that handles as great as this as well so uh, yeah let's, on, let's get out into the open road and see what this car can do. Right, so here we are at the drag strip, so let's see what this car can do in a straight line, and then we'll talk about it some more. So obviously, being a more track oriented vehicle, it's not meant for you know, pure straight line speed, but that does not mean it's slow, as it gets off the line really rather nicely. And yeah, it's uh, more than capable of getting up to a decent rate of speed, as you can see. 135 miles an hour pretty much there, which is really, really well a quite high uh, rate of speed for a car that obviously doesn't have the hugest amount of power. Um, but yeah, I do like the way that they've gone for the uh, engine in this car, with the way that they've tuned it. They've gone for more torque than uh, pure horsepower, because yeah, torque at the end of the day is what pretty much pushes you along, and given that this has very little in the way of weight, that torque is yeah put into great use, because yeah, we've got very little weight here to work uh, hold that engine back or, or waste the uh, power and torque that it's got going on. So uh, yeah, let's see what this car has in terms of stats before we race it around this track. So we're in high-end S1 class and yeah, they're the stats and as you can see, all pretty much great. The braking and the handling are superb. The launch is better than it looks, to be honest, as you saw when we got it off the line there on the drag strip, it was actually pretty much faultless off the line, so yeah, I guess it all depends on um, how well you get it off the line more than how well the car is. Acceleration is really rather good as well, um, top speed is where it's lacking, but like I said, because um, this car handles so well that the uh, top speed really is irrelevant because you're able to maintain a good rate of speed regardless of uh, how much it is. So even though you say we're getting 130, 140 miles an hour, that might not be as quick as some cars um, in the space of, say, that drag strip length, but this car is able to handle that amount of pa uh, speed around pretty much any corner because of how little it weighs and how well it's set up. So, uh, yeah, but let's listen to the engine first and then we'll talk about it some more.
So yeah, it sounds pretty good. It's not the best sounding engine in a car of this kind of type, but um, yeah, it still sounds pretty nice. And uh, yeah, it delivers its power also really well. And yeah, at the end of the day, the, hand the car on this, the handling on this is absolutely amazing. It's yeah, it's just practically faultless really. Just carves through corners like they're not even really there. And you really barely, barely have to brake as well for the uh, speedy corners either. 0 to 60 is also dealt with in only 2.788 seconds. 0 to 100 is dealt with in only 6.786 seconds. And it will. That's how good the car is going around corners. I was, you know, holding it down and it was going right the way around, not even having to brake. Um, yeah, 0 to 100 is dealt with in 6.786 seconds and it goes to a top speed of 150 miles an hour. So, yeah, that's not the highest of top speeds by any means, but it gets up there really rather nicely in terms of the, uh, the amount of time that it takes to get up there. It's not a slouch at all in terms of getting to that kind of speed. Um, because it's got a six-speed sequential gearbox as well, it flies through those gears really quickly as well. So they're not holding back the car either. So, yeah, and then you got the brakes as well, which, yeah, even though they don't have to be the best brakes ever, given how lightweight this car is, they do feel really rather bang up to date. And uh, yeah, they stop the car on a dime, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, yeah, there's nothing really wrong with this car, to be honest. Maybe you can say that the looks are a little bit bland, and they kind of are. But at the end of the day, this is about the driving experience. It's not about anything else. And even though they have tried to accommodate it in some regards in terms of practicality, the have at the end of the day still focused on the driving and uh, yeah as a driver's car it is amazing and uh, yeah it's really fun to drive and i imagine it will be quite competitive online as well so uh, yeah get this car pack with this car if you haven't got it already it's a really really good car pack it's not the best that we've had by any means as it only has four in it and the you know, at the end of the day three of them are um, more track orientated vehicles but it is well worth getting and especially since you know we are all four new vehicles to this game and uh, to the fourth series in general so um yeah excellent car pack brilliant car and a really rather fun one to drive as well and this is coming from someone that's typically not into track orientated vehicles but because this is such a fun car to drive i'm not really fussed about anything else about it that I might want i could see it as a flaw but yeah on the whole a really really great car Nonetheless, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.